Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A blessed Father, we thank you and praise your name. Worship you, Almighty God. Thank you for your mercies. And we thank you for bringing us together. I believe, as we know, because you want to do us good. I pray, Lord, that you do something definite in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Save those who need salvation. Supply the needs of your people. Support us, O God, spiritually. I'll be able, O God, to live in such a way as will please you. Minister to everyone, O God. Whatsoever needs to be removed, restored, renewed in our lives, do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You may take your seats. God bless you. We're looking at the subject as we come back to our search the scripture text. Looking at help from heaven. As you can see from our passage, the uh, Psalms we have looked at uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. In times of distress, you need help from heaven. In terms and in times of diseases, you need help from heaven. There are diseases actually that human beings just cannot help you in any way. In terms of disturbances, and we have a lot of that occurring in the world, we need help from heaven. Whatsoever is going on in your life at any time, in marriage, in ministry, morality in the society or any other thing that is happening help is required from the almighty god and we turn our bibles to psalm 46 psalms 46 verse 1 tells us very clearly it says god is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. God is always present in times of trouble is always present. The things we normally go through in life make us sometimes to forget that, that God is always near and you must always keep on reminding yourself God is present, God is a helper. In times of trouble, in times of difficulties, the Almighty God is available. God is a present help in trouble. And if you look at Psalm 60 in verse 11, verse 11 it says, Give us help from trouble. In times of our trouble, and we can't run away from it. Trouble is always there. When it occurs, he says, give us help from trouble, for then is the help of man. And sometimes, because human beings are visible and they are available, we can easily see them, we can e easily reach them, we tend to think those are the people to help us. How many times have they disappointed us? Yet, we keep on running to them. But the Bible is telling us here, it's a vain, is the help of man. Because, number one, it's not capable of satisfying all your needs. So, his help is limited. At the times when you will need him, it may be in the dead of the night, he's not available, he's sleeping. He has switched off his phone. So vain is the help we are looking for from man. It's short-lived. It's not able to cover all that is required. And it is not always available. In fact, sometimes the help from man, you will not be able to get it at the time you actually needed it most. So that's why the psalmist is telling us here, he says, vain is the help of man. As a result of that, we must learn to go back to the God of heaven who is capable of helping us and assisting us because you can't run away from trouble in this particular world. 
And that's why the psalmist, in the time of his trouble, he ran to God. Look at Job. And hear what we are told in the book of Job chapter 14. Job 14, in verse 1. He say, man that is born of woman, of a woman, is of few days. He doesn't live here forever. I hope you remember that you are not living here forever. It's a few days. If you live up to 80 days, 90 years, 100 years, those are few compared to eternity from everlasting. Billions of years, eternity is still starting. So he says, man that is born of a woman is a few days. It doesn't live here forever. And those few days are full of troubles from cradle to the grave. They're full of trouble. If they are full of trouble, then we must get help from the almighty God in times of our trouble. So that's why we are looking at this particular subject, help from heaven. And the heaven we are talking about is the abode of the almighty God. Heavens do rule and control in the affairs of mankind. And that's the reason why we must come to God in times when there is trouble. Heavens. They control the affairs of mankind in this particular world. And that's the reason why we must do everything possible to ensure that in all our getting, all that we seek for, all that we look for, we must get help. The help and the kind that comes from heaven. And uh, as far as the almighty God is concerned, is the one that rules. In Daniel, the book of Daniel chapter 4, in verse 35, it says, And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his own will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hands or say unto him, What doest thou? In the armies of heaven, there are armies in heaven God can release them at any time to accomplish whatsoever he wants accomplished. In the lives of individuals, in a nation, in a community, in the kingdom of God, in the church, everywhere, God can release them to accompany, accomplish whatsoever he wants accomplished. That's why Jesus Christ told his disciples when he was arrested, they were going to crucify him. One of them brought out a sword and wanted to fight physically. He said, stop all that. If I wanted, I could have told my father in heaven to send legions of angels. One angel in one night cleared 185,000 people, warriors, fully armed, just one angel, let alone when God himself releases those angels at work. And these are all ministering spirits, and they are sent forth to minister unto us who shall be the heirs of salvation. So the almighty God himself is the one who rules in the armies of heaven. And on earth here, he's in control. Very quickly, we are going to consider three points in our message. Number one, situations requiring help from heaven. There are certain situations you just cannot. Even where you know how to do, what to do, you still have to go back to God for anything possible to be done. Situations requiring help from heaven. Point number two, scriptural reasons for not receiving help from him. There are times when we go to God, no help seems to be coming forth. What causes that? And the psalmist here raised a lot of issues. The righteous man suffering, going through oppression. How can he be crying and no help seem to be coming forth? Scriptural reasons for not receiving help from heaven. We will close up with point number three. Sure root. There is a root. It's a road. Once you get into that particular road, you are sure. It's sure route to receiving help from heaven. 
There's a road once you enter into it, you are certainly going to receive help from heaven. You will receive help from heaven in Jesus' name. In the time of trouble, God will give you help from the sanctuary. God will send help from the heavens for you at the appointed time in Jesus' name. Give me a better amen. amen. The bigger your amen, the bigger your miracle. Amen. Now, point number one, we are looking at situations requiring help from heaven. We've looked at Psalm 46. He said, give us help. In Psalm 60, rather, give us help in verse 11. Give us help from trouble because vain is the help of man. It's not satisfying. It's not always sufficient. The help from man is not always sufficient and sometimes it's not even satisfying. As a result, of, it's short-lived the help from man because the man himself is not going to live forever that's why we need help from heaven and so give us help from heaven and uh, in chapter in psalm uh, 46 verse 1 he said god is our own refuge he's a very present help in the time of trouble if only you can remember that when any trouble occur in your academics in your studies in your, the thing you want to do, in the thing you are looking for, in the thing that has happened, if only you can remember that God is a very present help in times of trouble, in times of distress, if you can remember that. And God is always present with us. As we are told in the book of uh, Acts of the Apostle in chapter 17, if you read in verse 24, Acts of the Apostle chapter 17, verse 24, and that is what a lot of people normally forget, that the God we are dealing with, he knows everything about you and that it's not by accident you are living where you are living. It's not by accident that you are in this country. It's not by accident that you are born here. In verse 24, he says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation god determined it before you were born he actually knew the god of heaven before you were born he knew that you will be seated in this particular hall at this time on this particular day before you were born that's the god we are dealing with he determined beforehand the, ter the terms and the boundaries of their habitation. And why did he do all that he did? Look at verse 27. He said, that they should seek the Lord. If happily, they might feel after him and find him. Although he be not far from every one of us. God is not far from every one of us. But our responsibility is to come nearer to God as the topic of our search, the scripture goes, seek after him, seek after him until we recognize his presence. We realize his presence. We receive his presence and he reveals his presence unto us. Once God does that, all your problems are over. The only challenge we have is that we distance ourselves so much far away from God that as a result of that distance, when trouble comes, we are not able to run to him because we don't recognize his presence. We don't realize him. But it says here we should seek the Lord. If happily we will feel after him and find him, Although he be not far away from every one of us, God is nearer you than the person sitting next to you. But the problem is, you do not recognize that. If we realize that and recognize that, it becomes easy to receive help from the Almighty God because it's always available, ready to help at any given time, even when men are not around. So that's it. As we look at this particular situation, the situations requiring help from heaven. I would give you about seven of them. 
perplexing situations when they occur in your life, you need to go back to God from whom your help cometh from. Perplexing situation. Look at Second Chronicles in chapter twenty-two. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter twenty, from verse one. And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them also besides the Ammonite came against Jehoshaphat to battle. The battles of life are always there. It may not be nations coming against you, but you know what battles you normally go through, you fight. He said, they came against him to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and there, behold, they be in Hazazan Toma, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. When something that will make you afraid occur, let that drive you to God. Because it's a very present help in times of trouble. Something happened in your place of work? Fear. In the family? Fear. In your marriage? Fear. In the society? Fear. In the community, fear. In your personal life, fear. Health. And the thing makes you afraid. The doctors bring a report and you are afraid. Listen to what happened to this man. When he received all the news, what did he, what did he do? He and he set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Seeking God for help. In times of trouble, these are some of the things that normally make people, uh, some, somebody who is following God, something happens, he gives up following God. Said, so what's the use? Look at all that I've done, all that I've suffered, but look at what has happened to me. So there's no use serving God. And they decrease in their commitment, they decrease and derail in their fellowship with the Lord. That's the time you should focus more on the Lord. So Jehoshaphat feared and he set himself to seek the Lord and he proclaimed a fast. And Judah, verse 4, and Judah gathered themselves together to seek help, help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. That's what we are talking about. You seek help from God. And start running heter skater up and down. Vain is the help of man. Go back to God. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, he says, In verse 12, Oh, our Lord, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. That's where we have the challenge. Because we know what to do in times of trouble, our eyes are turned away from the Lord. But this man is saying, he's a king, don't forget. He has armies, don't forget. But he said, listen, this, what has come upon us is greater than ourselves. We don't know what to do. But we, we know what to do and we depend on what we know to do. And what we know to do doesn't solve our problems. Let's learn to go to God for help in times of trouble. He went to God and God sorted out the problem. We are not studying the case of Jehoshaphat and how his problem was sorted out, but you know it. That God recommended the unthinkable. Armies have come out against you, fully armed to the teeth. And then you go to God for help, and God tells you and say, don't go out against them with any weapon. I will fight the battle for me, for myself, by myself. And I don't need weapons of men to fight. The weapons are meant for men. I don't need it to fight. Leave that for me. All I want you to do is go out against them. Just begin to sing praises unto me. Leave the rest in my hand. That one we will say, no, it's illogical. 
These are soldiers who are fully armed. We should go out against them empty-handed and we'll just go and be singing, praise the Lord for his mercies endure forever. My friend, are you okay upstairs? It doesn't work. Let's be factual. Let's face facts. The reality is that these people are armed and they've come out against us and you are saying God is saying we should go out against them and sing. The ways of God are different from our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are his ways higher than our ways. And Joshua did that and it worked. Joshua, a whole city surrounded and the thick wall against Jericho Historians tell us that six chariots can run on top of the wall without falling down. That's how thick the thing is. And we are supposed to break it down to be able to enter the city. Joshua, how are we going to do it? He said, no, just go around the city. Don't make any noise. Nobody should talk. Just go around. Come back. Do that six days. On the seventh day, go around it seven times and then shout. Joshua, this war, what then if we shout, what happens next? Just do what I've told you to do. And they did it, and the walls fell down. All your walls are going to fall down. Yeah. Whatever walls the enemy has built against you, all of them will crumble. Yeah. You will leap over the wall, or the walls themselves will come crumbling down. So that was it. Perplexing situations. When you don't know which direction to go, what to do, go back to the Lord. And that's when to seek help from the Lord. And in times of number two, perennial sicknesses. The thing is recurring. I go to the doctor, go to the clinic, it's the same report. They prescribe medication, nothing seems to be working. It doesn't seem to be solving the problem at all. Go back to the Lord at such time. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, in verse 17. Mark chapter 9, from verse 17. Listen to what happened in this particular case. Mark 9, from verse 17. Verse 17 says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which had a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I suffer you? How long shall I be with, suffer, be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit turned him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed for me. And he asked the father, How long is it ago since this came unto him and he said of a child and of times it has cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him but if thou can do anything have compassion on us and help us God will have compassion on you the Lord Jesus Christ will surely help you I will tell Jesus all of my troubles. I cannot bear these burdens alone. If I but tell him, he will take care of everything. That's the Jesus we are talking about. This man said, please, if you can do anything, I assure you, he can do all things. So in times like that, perennial sickness, disturbances, distresses, let us learn to come to the Lord. Number three, poverty-stricken situation requires help from heaven. But we must learn that the ways of God are not our ways. When we are seeking help from heaven, we are seeking help from God, please understand what God will prescribe sometimes will not be logical at all. 
And that's the solution. Second Corinthians chapter 8 from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were weary of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Now, that is the solution to poverty. People do not recognize. When God prescribes something, don't try another method because it won't work out. Somebody is poor and we want to make contribution for GCK. He said, even God knows that, including the devil, everybody knows that I have nothing. So I cannot give anything. And that's exactly when to give. Did you hear what the Apostle Paul told them in Ephesians chapter 4? He says, let him that stole steal no more. But rather, let him labor. Why is he laboring? So that he will have to eat? No, no. So that he will have to give. Because if you don't give, there is no solution to poverty. There is no other way to get rid of poverty other than through giving. Give, it shall be given to you again. So in the case of perennial poverty, poverty-stricken people, to solve your problem, look for something to start giving. Don't defraud other people. Don't steal. That's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, let him that stole steal no more. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, so that he will have to give. Opportunity to become prospered will normally knock at our doors in our homes, in our marriages, in our families, in our lives, but we shun it. He says, let us do good. At every opportunity, let us give. And people say, no, but this thing is becoming too much. GCK every month. How can we be giving every month? The fact that you are giving every month, you are opening the door of opportunity. The, I don't have all the time, but the Apostle Paul made it clear. You go to Philippians chapter 4, he told them in verse 15, he said, from verse 15 to verse 19, the problem is that we normally read what will sound good in our ear. Verse 19 only. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But check up the, why he said that. He said these people gave even when I wasn't asking anything from them, they gave. He said, once and again, you have sent unto my necessity. He said, not because I desire anything from you, gift from you, but I desire fruit that will abound to your own account. And then he now said, because of that, my God will now supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Giving is a way of coming out of poverty. And all our leaders, you must pay attention. Stop saying your people are poor. The more you say it, you are pronouncing poverty on them. They give you a location and you begin to complain. You better rise up to the occasion and give and do even beyond that particular one. When you do beyond what is expected of you, you see the windows of heaven opening and Satan will not be able to stop it. So you seek help from God at such time, but when you seek those help from God, you must look at the scripture. Are there some things I must do? Then you do it according to the word of God. So it says here, it's very easy. Poverty-stricken situation requires us seeking help from God. And we must do according to what the scripture has prescribed. And that help will come. Help will come from heaven for you in Jesus' name. Number four. Number four. It's uh, when there is persecution from sinners. Acts of the... That's when we seek help from God. The persecution is so intense 
that we need help from heaven. We need help from God. We don't know what to do. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, look at verse 5. And there are several of them like that. Peter therefore was kept in prison, ready to be executed the next day. Peter therefore was put in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. That's how we seek help from heaven. It's by way of supplication and prayer. Unceasingly pray. If we can unceasingly pray, that's what the songwriter says. The soul that will live close to Jesus is he who spends much time in prayer. Although it may not always please us, but it is that which relieves us from cares. Would God that more people will pray for his prayer that moves mountains away. And those mountains of yours, they are sure to move out if unceasingly, my brother, you pray. So these people, the apostle was kept in prison Prayer was made by the church unceasingly for him. And there's no way you can pray unceasingly for heaven not to respond. There was, humanly speaking, no hope. James had been killed. Peter was arrested, put in the prison, ready to be killed the next day. That night, the God of heaven sent an angel. And those angels are still waiting for assignment to be given. If only we can pray in times of persecution, serious one, not uh, the persecution of no, my husband say, don't go to that church again. Is that persecution? <laughs> you are the one to decide whether you should go or not. No, but uh, if I go, he says marriage, marriage is finished. You choose between marriage and going to that church. Who told you that your marriage will finish because you are coming to deeper life? No ways. Except if you don't want, <laughs> you don't want to worship God. But, we're talking of serious persecution. Being arrested and put in prison, being massacred and killed, all that the church could do, because they, ha they didn't have any MP, they didn't have anybody to appeal to Herod, they only appeal to heaven. And when they appeal to heaven, help came from heaven. Saul of Tarsus was arrested by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And when he needs to, he will intervene. When angels need to, those are all ministering spirits assigned to give help for us who are children of God, called into the kingdom of God. Why shouldn't we benefit from that? But at such periods, we need to seek the help of God. And the devil knows how to play the game very well. He demoralizes the people of God from praying. Call for prayer meeting. Check up how many people will show up. That shows you where the battle really lies. These people sought help and angels were sent. Number five, it's in times when you need power over Satan. Hebrew, e e e Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 He said for we wrestle not against flesh and blood But against principalities Against powers Against the rulers of the darkness of this world Against spiritual wickedness in high places That's the reason why You must take unto you the whole armor of God And then Praying always With all prayer and supplication In the spirit At the time when we need help to be able to overcome the powers of Satan, help from heaven. That's at such times we need to supplicate and call upon God. And that's why he tells us in verse 10, he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. If you are strong in the power of God's might, not in your might, every help you will need will come at the appointed time. That's it. Number six, in times of perversion in our society. That's why the Bible says we should pray. You look at the things happening in our society, perversion sometimes. Look at the problems. Look at the difficulties. In some countries, thank God that all that is not happening here. The violence has reached alarming stage. That somebody was saying, I was listening to the news in that particular country yesterday. He says, the problem that we are having 
is that when you are in trouble, you dare not go to the police station because you might be reporting to the same people who organize the trouble you are going through. And when situation reach like that level, what should we do to pray? When the law enforcement agents who are supposed to protect us themselves now need help. I'm talking of police station. You are employing private security company to come and protect the police station. The people who should watch over us now need people to watch over them then we are in real trouble. So when, there is, when you analyze the troubles we are going through in our society, and sometimes our own will not be violence, it, it will just be that there is no maize in the market, and there is a lot of maize we have produced. That needs calling upon God. Where is the maize? All of a sudden, no meal meal. Then after some time, the meal meal surfaces. And not that we have done harvest. It's the same one that we harvested last time that finished, it just vanished. All of a sudden, it reappears again. Brethren, situation like that calls for help from heaven. That's when men, in their acumen, cannot sort out the problems of the society. So, at such time, that's why he tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, from verse 1, he said, I exhort first of all that prayer, supplication, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, because this is good in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, sometimes we've, we just feel that we can only pray for the government and pray for the president and pray for the leaders if they are from my party, the party I like. And you know me, I don't belong to any party. Even if I want to, I am not allowed by law to belong to any party. Anyway, that aside. But you have a responsibility as a believer to pray for whoever is in authority, whether you like the person or not. Why are we praying? So that we live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. The people in authority need the wisdom of God to make decisions that will enable us to live in quietness so that we are not having what they are having in Ukraine, in some other places, where there is unrest, Sudan, and name it. For that to happen in our society, quietness. Because God wants all men to hear the gospel and get saved. Because of that, that's why we have a responsibility to pray for that. So when society, we are having situations in our society where things are upside down. And you hear what he says in that same First Timothy chapter uh, 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 four, in chapter 4 now First Timothy say now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and uh, what next not only speaking lies in hypocrisies having their conscience here with a hot iron forbidding to marry and abstaining from meat which God has created to be received with thanksgiving. In verse 4, he said, for every creature of God is good. Verse 5, he said, for if it be sanctified with prayer and you pray over it, you are able to eat it. In the last times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit. And it's happening in our society today. And that's why we need help from God. Because you have whole lots of prophets who have risen up. Prophetess, they're all over. And they are prophesying. And all they are prophesying is, I see there is trouble following you. That's normal. That's what the scriptures say. Man that is born of woman is of few days and is full of trouble. And they have no solution for those trouble they are seeing. So there's nothing they are seeing that is new. It's normal. No, I see 
there is a curse in your life. No, that one is not true. You know why? Jesus Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Being made a curse for us. Because it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham, not a curse, will come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, and that we should receive the promise of the Spirit. So if any of them, prophet, prophetess, come to your home, meet you on the street, and say, uh, I see there is a curse in your life. That's why this one is happening, the other one in your family, there is no job, there is no promotion, there is hardship, there is no desire. Just tell the person, false prophet, get you behind me. Because there is no curse on your life. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, the curse is broken. It's only the one you accept. When they tell you and say there's a curse following you and you accept it, good luck to you. The curse, because the curse, costless, shall not come. Amen. You are free from every curse in Jesus' name. Amen. You rise up and stand your ground. So it's very clear in the society. Now, when there are perversions, that number seven, seeking help, is program. Of September, GCK we call it, eh? the program of September. I've given you seven of them. Program of September needs, that's a situation that needs help from heaven. How are we going to raise one million dollars? Help from heaven. But we must pray like people who are looking for help from heaven, eh? The way Jehoshaphat did it, when he feared, he feared the battle and he called for fasting and prayer. I don't know how we are doing the fasting and prayer for GCK September. I don't know what is going on. The prayer program doesn't appear as if we recognize that we need help from heaven for that program. Yesterday was supposed to be chain prayer. I decided to uh, cut off from South Africa, just see how, how much of the time I can spend on the platform. At some point, it was, we were only two. And that shouldn't be the case. Two. The pe and the person, he had been in the other platform, the people who, just 30 minutes prayer. 30 minutes, he finished the other one. So I joined I think at about 9.30 or thereabout. The two of us, we prayed. Somebody else joined. I think uh, internet dropped the person. Another person joined. Internet dropped the person. The two of us just continued. And we prayed. We finished that 30 minutes. Another 30 minutes, I think it was two of us again until we became four. He had to, had to call the other person and say, you lead. And we finished that one. Others dropped just like that now but that's not seeking god like people who need help this gck for september it requires help from heaven and we have to pray like people who are looking for help from heaven let's tighten our belt and if we pray god will intervene amen. give me a better amen. amen okay my time is gone Number two, point number two, why do people seek help and not get it? So we are looking at scriptural reasons for not receiving help from him, from God. Scriptural help for not receiving help from him. Number one, sin. Number two, slothfulness. Number three, selfishness. Number four, sensuality. Number five, stubbornness. Number six, Satan. Number seven, sovereignty. The sovereign will of God. Number one, sin. Isaiah 59 verse 1 and verse 2. He said, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save. Neither his ears heavy that he cannot hear. But he said, but your sins have separated between you and your God. That's the reason why he cannot hear you. If there is sin in your life, Psalm 66 verse 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. 
The Lord will not hear me. I want to plead with you. If you are going to receive help from God, this is what he hinders it. If there is sin in your life, secret sin or open sin, whatsoever kind of sin in your life, you are cherishing it and you are hiding it. And there are some people, for them, serving God is like, what do I call it? Like a religion. For them, it's a religion. You know, on Sunday morning, you must go to church. That's religion. No preparation of the heart. And you don't recognize that you are going to appear before a holy God. The God of heaven. The one who created the heavens and the earth. Just that alone, that you are going to, you are going to the house of God. That should make you to have a sense of awe. And that should affect when I go, how I appear, all of that should be affected. My conduct and my behavior, when I go to the Lord, I'm appearing before the God of heaven. Who sees everything about me, he knows everything about me, he knows what my devotion and my heart is after. If I'm going to appear before such a God, if the president of this country invite you and say, come to State House, I want to see you there, seven o'clock in the morning. Will you go there by eight? Answer me. Uh, so why should we be giving the man in State House? Because he's in plot one. We must give him more reverence and better attention than the God of heaven. So, your, your attitude, your lifestyle, your behavior, coming to appear before God is not just a religion. It's coming to appear before the creator of the heavens and the earth. Therefore, you must prepare your heart. Like Ezra did it in chapter 7, verse 10. Ezra had prepared his heart to seek so if you are going to seek God, you must prepare your heart. Check up your heart. What's in the inside of your heart? Your attitude, your actions, your behavior, the things you did. Now, if God were to bring to the fore everything that you have done, how ashamed or proud are you going to be about them? Check up. If there is sin in your life, keep it far away from you. That's what Job says. He says, acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. If you stretch out your hand towards heaven and there is iniquity in your heart, keep it far away from you. Repent and turn away from it. The people who hide sin, whether small or big, contention with other people, unforgiving spirit, strife, hatred, envy, bitterness, or let alone those one, they, we call it small things. Those are small sins. As far as God is concerned, there's no small sin, there's no big sin. Those who hide that, or let alone the people who go to the extent of they steal, they fight, they can beat their wives, they can commit immorality, they can cheat on their wives, they can cheat on their husband, let alone those ones. Those ones are even outside the kingdom of God. But the issue is that sin hinders us from receiving help from God. I know some people normally, when they hear that, they say, but I've been living in sin and God is helping me. Look at, I even have promotion. <laughs> Go ahead. The thing you are forgetting is Romans chapter 2. The goodness of God is leading you to repentance. God is doing good to you, even when you are in iniquity, you are committing sin, because he's trying to see maybe doing good to this person will lead him to repentance. And if you shun it, it's at the detriment of your soul. So sin hinders help from God. And that Jeremiah says it in chapter 5, verse 25. He said, your iniquity have turned away good things from you. Better things would have come to you, but your sins have turned them away. Number two, 
slothfulness. James made it very clear. Laziness to pray. Some people find it difficult to call upon God in the time of trouble. And yet, that's when we are supposed to call upon him. They find it difficult to do that, and as a result of that, it becomes a problem to them. In James chapter 4, look at verse 2. The later part of that verse 2 tells us, it says that ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. When there is laziness to pray, it hinders you from getting help from God. Number three, selfishness. That same James chapter four, in verse three, he said, ye ask and receive not because ye ask and miss that ye may consume it upon your loss. Selfishness. Jeremiah 45 verse five, he said, seekest thou great things for thyself? Are you just praying because of self-centeredness and selfishness? Competition with other people. I want to be better than so and so, so that they see that I am blessed of God. Selfishness. That's why people don't receive help from God. Number four, sensuality. James chapter 3, in verse 15, he says, This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Now, that's the kind of thing that is sensual, is concentrating on our animal instinct. Carnal. When you are carnal in your lifestyle, your devotion, your desires, you won't get anything from God because what you are asking for is not to the glory of God. Then number five, stubbornness. There are some people who are just sheer stubborn people. They know the judgment of God. They know what the word of God says, but they deliberately live contrary to that. They know it. God has said it very clearly in his word, and it's not that they are ignorant of it, and they, even if they are ignorant, the times of ignorance, God went out, but commanded all men everywhere to repent. And God himself wants us to turn away completely. If you look at the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 1, verse 32, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They even support other people who do it. Those are the situations. Number seven is the sovereign will of God. We've read in the book of uh, Daniel chapter 4, during our summary, in verse 35, God do it according to his own will. So there are times when you may even want to seek help from God. You are seeking help from God, but God who knows the end from the beginning knows what is right for you. He knows that what you are seeking for is not going to benefit you. Out of his own sheer sovereign will, he just decides and says, no, 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 don't give him that kind of help. If you give it to him, he will destroy him. The little I've given to him, look at the thing has taken him so far away from me, giving him more will even make him to perish. So out of his own sovereign will, the sovereignty of God, he just decides not to give you that help. My time is gone. Let's close up very quickly. We are looking at sure road, sure route, sure steps, sure way to receiving help from heaven. Number one, make sure you are saved. Two, Get separated from the things that will soil you. Number three, you must be sanctified, purified in your heart. It will help you quite a lot. And uh, number four, there must be submission. Submission to the will of God and to the scripture. Number six, there must be single-mindedness. You are focusing on him and you have confidence in him, not turning this way and that way. And number seven, you serve him. If you serve him, he will surely fulfill his program. Let me quickly run through. Number one, you must be saved. If you are not born again, you've not given your life to Jesus Christ and you are just seeking God for the mundane things of this world. It doesn't work like that. There is a pattern 
And that pattern is clear. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things will be added unto you. Make sure you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are not born again, if you've not repented of your sins and your iniquity to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, this is the time to do it. Because Acts chapter 4, verse 12 tells us, it said, there's no salvation in any other. There's only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. That's the name of Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus Christ, not just to know it in your head that he's our Savior. Let him come and actually save you from sin. Change your life, transform you completely, break the yoke of sin and deliver you from the power of sin so that he will give you a new nature. That's why we call it being born again. A new nature that will enable you to follow Christ. With all your heart, not just going to church. Going to church is good. But righteousness, not just being religious, but to have the righteousness that comes from Christ Jesus. Number two, there must be separation. Separation from the world and the wickedness that are there in the world. Unfortunately, we are having today, religion, Christianity is like a fashion. I'm born again. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. Meanwhile, there's no fruit of repentance in the life of the person. There must be separation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to verse 18. In, in verse 18, it says, Wherefore, come out from among them. That's verse 17. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing. But there are people who say they are born again. They are still touching unclean things. They are giving bribe. They are taking bribe. They are smoking. They are drinking alcohol secretly or privately or whatever, all of those things is still happening in their life. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Let there be a distinction between you and the unsaved. He said, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Sanctification experience makes our hearts to be pure. That we don't have any ill feeling towards other people and we don't have motives that are contrary to the will of God. That's very important and it's essential that Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 25 to verse 27 it says, husbands love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and he gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, but it should be holy without blemish. God is looking for it. He's calling us unto holiness. And normally when we have a topic like seeking help from heaven, we must not mention anything against sin. We just come together and then we shout and then we say help from heaven, help from heaven. It doesn't come that way. We must be obedient to the word of God before we can receive the promises that he has given. So holiness of life is essential. Purity of heart. And what, what is your heart affection like? And then not only that, number four. You must be submissive. Submissive to the will of God and to the word of God. And the scripture made it very clear. If you go to that book of James, James chapter 1, it tells us from verse 22. It says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He... For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in all his deeds. God will bless you in everything you are doing. But you see, it's in obedience to the word of God. The people who push the word of God aside, like those who say, no, 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 this is not the time to talk about the Bible. We want to face reality. Somebody ran away from the husband. Made pregnant by another man. And the husband said, no problem, you can still come back to me. And I went to talk to the person because I was engaged to speak with her over that. Since I knew that's what the Bible is talking about. I went there, the madam welcomed me, I sat down. Gave me a chair, I sat down in the office. I introduced the topic. I said, this is why I've come. She said, okay, you are most welcome. 
but I don't want anybody to tell me this is what the Bible is saying because I know it and I'm not ready to obey. What do you want to do with such people who know what God has said and they are not ready to obey it? Submission, we must be submissive to the word of God and the will of God, even if it's not convenient for us. That's what is required. And that's the route to securing help from God. Number five, we must supplicate. And our prayer should not be ordinary prayer. In Psalm 50, I wish we had all the time, Psalm 50 from verse 9 to verse 15. There's something interesting in that particular uh, passage. Actually, verse 5, first of all, says, Gather my sins together. Those who have made covenant with me by sacrifice. That's already saying that this kind of online connection, virtual meeting, when there is no justification for it, there is no reason why you should not go to Bible study where the Bible study is holding, Sunday service where others are gathering together. Gather my sins together. When we gather like that, the service says that those people, they made covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. Part of what they will benefit is that as they gather like that, in verse uh, 15, he say, and call upon me, call unto me in the day of trouble. He said, I will answer thee. I will hear you. Psalm 121 verse 1, he said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. There must be supplication. You don't just say, no, God knows that I'm a child of God. He should do what is right in his sight. No, you must still call upon God. That he wants. Number six, there must be single-mindedness. And you find that in uh, uh, the, the word of God in James chapter 1 from verse 5 to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom or he lacks any other thing, let him ask of the Lord that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not. But let him ask in faith, not in wavering. No doubting, no wavering. You must be single-minded about it that my help will surely come from the Lord. Number seven, you must serve him. Not just serve in the church. It's good to serve in the church, like these people who are playing instruments, although they are not enough anyway. That's okay. But we must not limit serving God to serving in the church. It goes beyond that. If we are going to get help from God, we must serve the Lord. Create time to serve the Lord. And I challenge those of you, you are born again. In which capacity and which area are you serving the Lord? Or you're just sitting there in the kingdom of God, in the house of God, just bench warmer. We must serve the Lord. We serve him, and when we serve him like that, then there is bound to be intervention of the almighty God you can check up for yourself Isaiah chapter 38 from verse 1 to verse 5 the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 he said we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear the service of God requires our devotion Complete devotion unto the Lord and they will be obedient to his word. That will bring a lot of blessings. Exodus chapter 23, in verse 25, he said, And ye shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and bless your water. And he will take sickness away from the midst of you. God will take sickness away from the midst of you in Jesus' name. And when you do that, and they, nothing shall cast their young. And nobody will be burying in your midst. That's what God said. And we should stand on the word of God and have it fulfilled. Look at Job in chapter 36, Job 36, in verse 11. Job 36, verse 11, he said, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. If they obey, there is a condition. Obey and serve the Lord. Some people serve the Lord without obeying him. They just activity, run up and down, do this and do that. And they are, for them, that's serving the Lord. Let's go back to the rudiments, to the 
foundation of serving the Lord. House Caring Fellowship leader, let's serve the Lord. You are a worker. In which area are you serving the Lord? Where can God count on you? That so and so is obedient to the word of God, is obedient to instruction, is obedient to leadership, and at the same time is serving the Lord, obeying God, obeying leadership, obeying in every area, and they serving the Lord. Not the people who are heady and high minded, nonchalant about serving God, they are not involved in doing anything. Which area can God depend on you? Today, things must change. And by the grace of God, we are going to serve the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet. We are going to pray together. If they obey and serve him, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity. In prosperity. That's what God wants for you. And their years in pleasure. Every day of their lives in prosperity. That's what God plans for you. But there must be repentance. Total repentance. Complete repentance. You surrender your life unto the Lord. And let there be a change. Let's not make this church just a religious house. Religious gathering. Let it be a place of righteousness. Where righteousness will reign. Not just religious people gathering together. No redemption. No regeneration. No righteousness. Repent. And give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Surrender your life to Christ. And then be obedient to the Lord. If they obey and serve him. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in plenty. God wants to help us. God wants to help you. He's ready to help, but we must seek him. Seek the Lord. If happily you will find after him, you will feel after him and find him. For he be not far away from every one of us. God is so near, but he wants us to seek him. He wants us to seek him. If you are not born again, surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change your life and save you. Is there any sin that is bothering your life? You are failing to break away from it. God will change you. Call upon him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to pray at this time. I want to first of all pray for those who want to surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. You want to repent of your sins and give your life to Christ. Put your hand up. Those are the people I want to pray for now very quickly. Any more? God bless you. Are there some more like that? Put up your hand. Put your hand up wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. Any more before I pray? Some more people like that, you're surrendering your life to Christ. Keep your hand up, put it up. As you are putting up your hand, ask the Lord. Tell him, oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. I now want to follow you. I want to serve you. Wash away all my sins. Change me completely. Tell him like that. Give me new life. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. I surrender unto you. I surrender unto you. Change my life. Wash away my sins with the blood of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I commit all these hands into your hands. I'm asking, Lord, that you wash away their sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, it's only the blood of Jesus Christ that can wash away sin. With the blood of Jesus, wash them clean in Jesus' name. Amen. Forgive all their transgressions. Make them new people. Give them grace to follow you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for hearing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody, tell the Lord what you want him to do in your life. Help. Help. 
from heaven. Help. From heaven. Help. Our God is a very present help in times of trouble. Is there any trouble in your life? Help. God will intervene. Help. You will have a testimony so you glorify the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Put up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bring all your people before you. Lord, we come before you because we know you are a very present help in trouble. Whatsoever trouble, torment, or problem, or challenge anybody here is going through, sickness, disease, affliction, persecution, oppression, that requires your intervention. Lord, I pray, be gracious, be merciful, intervene for them in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for those who are sick, any kind of sickness, perennial, O oh God Almighty, intervene. Seasonal, intervene. Whatsoever affliction has come from the enemy, O oh Lord, intervene, heal the sick in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, do it in a spectacular way that everybody will know this is the hand of God. Lord, I pray you sort out problems in the lives of your people. Every person here, oh God, I pray you visit them in a definite way in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatsoever needs your intervention in any area of their life, in their marriage, in their moral, oh Lord, in ministry, in their society, in their place of work, in their academics, oh God of all grace, Give us help from heaven because we know vain is the help of man in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I pray, God, that you will touch every life, Amen. touch every home. Amen. Let them go back home with your presence and your power in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, eternal God, because we believe you, Vansa. May your name be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may take your seat. Okay.